Open the gate, baby. Welcome to the missile silo. You come over here, you put a projector for Banjo's movie showings. You can show mo- You got chicken? Yo, this is February 26th of 1999. These doors are cut like that. They are plasma cutted. It was because they sent down scuba divers because uh, there was a body in here. That is supposedly a hundred feet deep. If this breaks, there's nothing down there to climb up on and we'll be a hundred feet of water. So basically we'll just tread water till you die. Where's the missile? Yeah, I, I got scammed. They didn't sell you the missile? No, no. Shoo! Shoo! Well, folks, as you can tell by the title, <laughs> yeah, baby, all right? As you saw previously, a few weeks ago, we actually toured a abandoned, nuclear missile silo, Atlas F missile silo, that used to house a missile that would blow up Cuba into smithereens. And uh, it was for sale on Zillow. We went and took a look, took a gander, made a video, and some of you guys thought it was a great idea, some of you guys thought it was a terrible idea, and you know, I just decided to flip a coin and, welcome Banjo. It landed on head. Well, welcome home. Flip the old coin, and we now own a abandoned Atlas F missile silo. This is the entrance, by the way, this is not, this is real. This is razor wire, huge. I mean, this looks like a freaking penitentiary. Look, look behind me. Looks like the state pen right here. Banjo's locked on the inside. Rumor is Banjo's actually gonna live here full time. So you guys gotta make sure he uh, he sticks to his word. And another thing is Macy doesn't really quite know that I bought it. I know that's bad. But if this gets 25,000 likes, I'll bring her here and you can get her reaction. But today's episode, if you guys are new here and you didn't see the original tour video, we're gonna tour the entire thing and we're gonna tell you guys exactly what our plan is with this. Cause I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering why in the hell would you buy an abandoned missile silo? The real question is why would you not buy an abandoned missile silo? So we're gonna go in through these gates today. We're gonna show you, I mean, it's crazy. Like I said, if you're new here, this thing's 175 feet deep. There's living quarters. It's underground. Like you see right now, that missile silo is under that. It's completely underground. We're gonna turn this property into the ultimate doomsday preppers paradise, okay? Just in case the world comes to an end, I and my family, and maybe if I'm nice, I'll let Banjo stick around, will have a place to stay to where it, this thing is bomb proof. It's, I think it's earthquake proof. We don't have hurricanes or tsunamis here, but pretty much any bomb, this thing should be able to withstand it. It's got like nine foot concrete walls, and we want to turn this entire property into a fully self-sustained bug out shelter, doomsday house, where we might have a pond filled with fish, we'll have a food plot to attract the deer to harvest, we'll have gardens, we'll have everything, this thing will be ran off of solar. I mean, we are going to transform this property to be completely self-sustained, completely off-grid, and it'll be nuke proof. Who can say that? Not many people, but it makes me feel good knowing I've got a place like this to take my friends and family in case, you know, stuff hits the fan. So with that being said, Banjo, go ahead, Banjo. Open the gate, baby. Welcome to the missile silo. Inside. Well, not inside. We are inside the compound. This is six acres of fenced with razor wire on the top. You ain't getting in and you're actually not getting out. But this is an old Quonset hut pad. If you guys don't know what those are, I'll pop a picture here. This is where they held a lot of the military vehicles. So this was in the military, if you guys didn't put all that together. During the Cold War, the Cuban Missile Crisis, that's when this thing was developed. Back in the day, I think it was, I don't, quote me, Banjo, do you remember the price of this? Was it 14 or $17 million to build this thing? I think it was $17 million to build it in 1961. Which was, 1961 was a while ago, in case you were curious. Nowadays to build it, it's pushing $150 million. Uh, and I, So I got this thing for a steal, just tell that to my wife when she asked. And I did not pay anywhere near that. So if you wanted to recreate this and you want your own bomb shelter like this one today, hopefully you have 150 million laying around because that's what it would cost to rebuild this sucker. But you've also got some more concrete pads here. So kind of what we're thinking is we could put some type of shelters here. We could put some type of pole barns for storage, right? Although it's only six acres, you guys will see over the next 
probably two years, transform this property. Six acres is actually a lot, especially, this is nice flat ground. Banjo, this might be the first flat ground purchase I've ever had. I hate flat ground, apparently. I love flat ground. I just like good views. And so where I have my house, where I'm building my new house, my hunting property is just hilly as can be. And this is actually super flat. If you have six acres of super flat ground, you can actually develop it pretty in depth where you can have lots of activities in a very small area. So I know you guys are thinking six acres isn't a lot. Why'd you buy this? But I'm telling you, you'll see, we're gonna have fishing ponds. We're gonna have dirt bike tracks. We're gonna have food plots for deer. I mean, we might have a basketball court, which is where the top of that. Found something for you. You got some nice bones. That's yeah. a nice spoon. Look at that. Yeah. So you found something that just died right here, huh? Yeah. So there are going to be some critters. I mean, you can see we are in the middle of nowhere. That's how we like it. This thing, we want this thing to be incognito. In fact, one crazy plan that we thought of, because we came and visited this place and I, we had a, a, a big, big meeting, big important meeting. We're like, what could we do? Because I, I mean, it's my dream. I love Doomsday Preppers growing up. This is my dream to have a property like this. I just got to make sure I can execute it the right way. And I feel like, especially after remodeling the ranch cabin, I'm like, I feel like our, our skin skills have increased or we could probably turn this thing into something really cool. But one idea, you guys let me know if it's a terrible idea, is so there's your entrance by the way. This is the entrance right here. This is all there is. It's just a door in the middle of a field. That's it. You see when we go down there, it's going to be nuts. But what I'm thinking, we put a house on top of this, okay? So then you don't know. You have no, you may drive down the gravel road if somehow you make it out in the middle of nowhere and you're like, oh, cute little farmhouse they got over there. They're going to keep on going. Little do they know your basement is a missile silo. Yeah, so that's one idea, okay? Another idea is just leave it as is. It's not a big deal. But we thought about putting, because there's living quarters down in it, and we want to finish that. So you might be thinking, well, why would you want a house up top? Well, actually, right now, Macy and the baby are not going to stay down here. So if I want them to actually come down here, if, you know, all of a sudden somebody starts firing missiles at the U.S. and we need a place to go hide, I want to make sure they're comfortable. And so they could at least stay in the house, and as soon as the missiles start getting fired, then we can go crawl down in the basement. But speaking of the basement, I think it's time to go down there. One, it's like 102 degrees out here, so we need to go down there. Two, this place is insane. Again, if you didn't see the first episode, you guys are going to be amazed. I can't believe I'm an owner of a missile silo, but stay tuned because when we get done showing you guys the inside We're gonna give you a full property tour and show you where we're gonna put the ponds where We're gonna put we've got deer blinds We've got all sorts of other activities that we're gonna put out here on this property And I need your guys' help to tell us what we're missing what we should do and what we need to make this thing completely self-sustainable in case of a missile attack so with that being said banjo welcome to the nuclear missile silo Oh baby, does it look at this? This is stairway to heaven, man. But look at that. Or we're going down, so maybe hell. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, can you? It's just in the middle of the field. It's just crazy to me. You walk straight down these stairs, down in, and oh, it's already changing. It's, it's already probably, 20 degrees. It's like different. 60 degrees now. Yeah. It's like 55 in here, pretty much year round. So we love it here. It was hot, and I was like, all right, boys, we finally closed on the missile silo. We're gonna go make a video, especially because it's hot out. So you come around here. Look at this. We're winding. Just wait. It gets better. Just be patient. Trust me. Bam. This is where, and a lot of this, if you guys saw the first video, it'll be a little bit of repetition, but this is where the first blast door was. So, well, actually this wasn't a blast door, was it? No, it wasn't. This was just the entrance. So there used to be a door here. You can see up top, there's a door right there. This is the interrogation room. You'd go through a door, they'd lock you in. You'd give them a code. If it was the right code, they would let you through to this side. If it was the wrong code, right there. See you later, sayonara. And then they had a little bucket right here that you'd put your code in and then burn it. It was one type code use only. Then you go through here and you've got blast door number one. I mean, these are like, oh, does this one shut? Yeah, one, moves. come on. No way. No way that shuts. Does it really? Let's see it. Oh, is this, yeah, it does. Oh my gosh. Oh, Easy, don't, don't crush me now. <laughs> Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cheese and rice. So that's the old blast. I mean, the, she ain't like look how heavy that is, dude. There's five of these, five blast doors. So the blast doors serve two purposes. One, any blast from up top, don't make it through. And any blast from the silo, don't make it through to here. And this whole thing doesn't just, just disintegrate. Then you come into here. This is just another break room where it would have air to absorb any shock. Blast door number two. Okay, so you get through blast door number one, blast door number two, and then wow, bam. You get to Banjo's favorite room in the house. Oh yeah, this is the place to be. So you've got the staircase here. All the way down there, there's three flights of stairs to get down to the tunnel. We'll show you guys that. This is the living quarters. This is where 
the people that worked here, that were stationed here in the military, actually were stationed and actually worked. So wah bam! Wow, does the audio sound a lot different in here with the, with the installation. So this is what the living quarters looks like. This may look a little different, just a little different than when you guys were here when we came out here for the exploration because we got brand new subfloor put in. We as in the previous owners because there were some rotted spots and there was a little little bit of sign of mold and so they went ahead and just redid the whole, so we have brand new three quarter inch subfloor across the entire, so we have clean slate so we can put flooring in, we can do whatever. So that's why a lot of this furniture is actually moved into a different location than what it was in the previous video. So that's what happened during closing. That's why there was such a delay between the last video and this video is we had to fix all that. We had to fix the flooring. We had to get rid of the mold. We had to put in a water treatment uh, deal so we can actually drink the, wa the well water in here because it had some nitrates. We had to put dehumidifiers in. There was a few things that we had to get done before closing. And so that's essentially what we did. But all this is the old furniture from the previous owner. So it's up to us to decide what to do with it. Do we keep it? Do we throw it out? Uh, hauling stuff in and out of here is not super easy as you saw that stairway, but here's our master plan. We're still, we're still trying to figure it all out, but this is, I believe this is, is this 1500 square feet? I don't think this feels like 1500. I bet it's combined. Maybe combined. So this is probably, I mean, this is kind of a big space. I guess, I don't know how, how far, I mean, how far do you think that is? I mean, that's four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36 and some change. So 40, what's the, what's the area of a, 40 circumference circle. I definitely failed that class. This is a circle. The diameter of it is 40 feet. What is the area? That's what this is. And so we've got a bathtub here, okay? We've got a toilet there. It's actually supposed to be there. They picked up the toilet to move the subfloor. So we're thinking about rearranging this sucker and we don't really want the toilet, the bathroom to be at the entrance. We're gonna have to move plumbing. And I mean, this is gonna be a big project. Don't get me wrong, it's a big project. A lot of you guys are like, Blair, this is just one big money pit. I don't know why you would ever do this. Because, I will have a bomb-proof, nuclear-proof shelter to come live in in case something hits the fan. Plus, it's just freaking sick. Who else can say they own a missile silo? Not many people, especially this one, which is cleared by the EPA to be safe to live in. You could literally live in here if you really wanted to. I mean, right now, we're like 50, 60 feet underground right now, and you you wouldn't even know. So, did you figure it out? Yeah, he did. 1,256 square feet. Okay, so pretty close to it. So, 12, so this is 1,200, and then there's one beneath here that's not finished, that's, that's not insulated as well. It's also 1,200. So, we could finish both levels if you wanted to. If you wanted to finish it all, you would have a combined total of 3,500 square feet in total. So we're thinking, you've got your toilet and your bathtub. We're thinking about running the plumbing. You'll see down below, the plumbing is pretty exposed. Running the plumbing here, putting the bathroom on this side, and then walling it off. But the missile style is so cool because it's, this is a circle. I mean, the floor, it actually floats. Everything in this place was to be shock absorbed. Bing, absorption, absorbing. Where if a bomb goes off, like this whole thing doesn't just crumble. So the floor floats. A lot of the lights that were original were all on springs. So the floor floats here and they were actually held on by them. See, that's a, that's a chain right there. They were actually held on by that. I mean, that thing, it's kind of hard to tell. You can't reach that, can you? I know you, you, got, you got them. That's going to be the world's biggest chain. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's like twice as big as your hand. I got big hands. That's just a link, just a link of, of a chain. So that's what you held all this up. So we're thinking on the layout design. We got bathroom over here, okay? And then we have to find a place for the kitchen. So because this thing is circular, I like the look. I don't want to wall the whole thing off. I don't want to make it into square boxes. I think the only place that's really, you really need walls would be the bathroom uh, with the toilet. And every Everything else should be open concept. So, you know, maybe over here we have bedrooms and I, don't, I think it should just be one open room where you've got, you know, three bunk beds, bang, bang, bang. Okay, maybe you got like a little couch. You come over here, we put a projector for Banjo's movie showings. You can show move. You got chicken? <laughs> the, the previous owners leave some chicken or what? Found in the back. There it is. That's some good stuff. Pretty so you got the projector here, maybe a big L-shaped couch, and then the kitchen. So we do have power there, and we've got power. So we'll have to draw it up and design it. There's plenty of room, though, as you can tell. We, we need a kitchen. We need a living room. I just think projector because it'd be sick. Because, like, imagine watching movies here at night. That'd be cool. We got to watch, like, movies about, like, bomb shelters and stuff. You ever seen those? There's one like, There's one where the dude, like, lived in there, yeah. Well, and then there's, like, there's, there's all sorts of documentaries about this, but imagine watching it in it. Is there any, like, haunted ones? I'm not, see, I'm not about that strap. Yeah, see, see, I'm not, all I'm saying is the first time we sleep in here, I will have an insane amount of gats just strapped up, ready to just pop, 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 pop. Cause I'm scared. There's only one way in and one way out, except there is an escape hatch, which no one's used ever, uh, but it's there. There's your ladder. You pull that screwdriver and this door swings down and you can crawl up. He'll show you what it looks like up top. But that's pretty much the gist of this room. I mean, it's, we got junk to kind of go through. There's some stuff we might keep, but we need to, we'll have to run plumbing uh, for a kitchen sink. We're gonna be running plumbing for that anyways. Um, so maybe, I don't know, I'm not a plumber, but you could put some T's to shoot up and do the thing. So maybe your kitchen is somewhere on here. Maybe it's on the backside of your 
your bathroom, so you, you go up to the wall. What do you think? What if the kitchen surrounded this middle? What? Well, who do you think we are, thing. Bob the Frickin' like, Builder? I think we could do it. That'd be cool. <laughs> cool. You think you think that'd be yeah, the deal? Like fridge, oven, countertop, sink. Just a three, just a three sixty. Three sixty, like stove top. Really? Yeah. Just a huge hibachi. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that everyone sits around it and then the chef just like, he yeah. just walks in a circle and throws you shrimp? Oh, that could be sick. So this is level number one. Again, if you guys saw the first video, you, it probably looks a little bit different, but this is it. I mean, it's ours. This is, we got you guys gotta comment down below, how should we design this? You've got a 40 foot diameter circle to design it and the plumbing starts there. So we're probably gonna run the plumbing linear so we don't have to like jet it all out, but we'll see. Plumbing is not that difficult because I'll show you downstairs, there's actually some exposed plumbing. So really? Really. <laughs> Some nice, definitely up to code. Um, by the way, that was in fact the main water or power source hanging up there with the old two by four. So we might put a little hanger up there, but hey, it does the trick, hangs over the bathtub just in case. Uh, so down here, you were gonna crawl down here. We're going down to level number two. And what are we grabbing, man, Joe? Oh, the flashlights. Yeah, we need flashlights. We'll show you the missile style. It's crazy. We, I bought the world's most expensive and the world's brightest flashlight, 100,000 lumens for this project and this project only. Because the missile was pitch black in the last episode and it didn't do it justice. So through here, bam. Banjo, this is the hard area. Only come in if you're hard, what? He's always hard. Oh, yeah. speaking, okay, now keep going. <laughs> so this room, uh, oh yeah, remember this is Jason's room. Remember, remember Jason? Yeah, yeah Jason. this is big Jason claim this room. The ghost, so Jason's ghost is silly. So that's the plumbing. So you can see how they did that strap. Um, just plasma cut of that floor. So we're thinking you run down, you could probably put, take this plumbing and put it over there and that would get against that wall. The only reason I don't like it over there is because you, I don't wanna walk in and see a bathroom. I wanna walk in and see it just wide open. But this room, this, this room just looks so different than the other one, even though they were like the same. Like there's so much different, cause it's not insulated, it's not painted. This is original metal floor that you feel like you're gonna fall through at any point. We need to put like a board right here. Is that you almost died? Yeah. That was not, that would not have been good, huh? No. But Jason, Big Daddy Jason lives here. So, oh, we got light bulb out. Freaking rip. So this is level number two, same thing, 1,200-ish square feet um, that we could do anything with. You could come in here and put subfloor down and have two layers. I mean, you could have two, like a little two floor deal. I mean, we even consider like, once this thing's finished, assume, assuming it's up to code and like safe, like this thing would be an amazing Airbnb that you guys could come and stay at. Like it would be freaking sick to have something like that. You guys can come out. Maybe I'll just give away some trips to come out and you guys can come hang out. And especially once you have the fishing pond ready, we've got hunting food plots. I mean, you'll be able to hunt, fish, ATV, and hang out in a missile silo. I think it'd be freaking unreal. And then here, these are, what are these, Banjo? Oh, Self-reliance unit? I didn't realize they were called that. Self-reliance. Banana slice. Yo, this is February 26th of 1999. I was one. What? Were you even born? Yeah. How, 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 when were you born? 99. Really? 99. Really? Wait, so no, you, but you weren't born yet. What year? February 26th of 1999. Oh, I wasn't. You weren't, this is older than Jake? Oh my. Dude, this is January 29th. That's my birthday. I was two years old when this non-fat powdered milk was like made. we gotta try that eventually. I was two. That's Oh, I didn't realize this was so old. He left all this. So these are like MREs from 90. So this guy, he bought it because he thought Y2K was gonna just be, you know, the world's gonna explode. And so he bought this and then life was fine and there was no problems. Um, the other thing, Banjo, you wanna shine your light down here? Yeah. I'm not gonna crawl down there yet. Can you shine down there? Oh yeah. All those five gallon buckets down there are also filled with food. The whole underside of this floor is filled with food. And there was like knitting supplies, just a thing of salt, a thing of pepper. So we're gonna eventually, we don't have time today, obviously in today's episode, we gotta go through this. I wanna eat food that's older than Jake. That's my goal in life. I don't think I've ever done that. Yeah, I don't think I wanna eat any food older than me either. <laughs> I mean, what is, what's the life expectancy on the uh, MREs in that? Quite a bit? I have no idea. We might have to check that out first. 20 years old might be, I mean, that's a lot. Yeah, they right. want some banana slices. Yeah, those banana slices sound fire right now. There ain't no way those are still good, dude. There's gonna be mag. What, what even survives? Maggots don't even survive that long. So there's level number two, Jason's room. As you can tell, Jason was here. And then you go down one more floor, okay, to the basement. This is the tunnel right here. We have a 40 foot tunnel. This goes to the actual missile silo. So here's another door. Ooh, that's a dense one. Come through here. Look at this tunnel. It goes all the way to blast door number. We had one. Two, would well, this have been three? This would have been four, and then the last one is five. So here's a fun fact. The real estate agent told me, we don't know what year, but the reason why these doors are cut like that, they are plasma cutted, and you've got the pool noodles on there, was because they sent down scuba divers because uh, there was a 
body in here. Somebody said they put a body in here. They had a plasma cut the doors to get in because the doors were shut and they said they never found it. So we don't know if the person was lying or not. I don't know if this was like two years ago or if this was 25 years ago. Um, I, I know DR, he was here in 78 though. He was rocking in 78. So he, he was, uh, yeah, that's old. That's like super, super old. So we got blast door number, this was four. Yep, there's a yep. four right there. So you crawl through this bad boy. And then this is like a, I don't really know what they had in here, to be honest with you. There's all sorts of electrical. I mean, this, I feel like at some point someone's gonna get shot. We should, is there a way to test if there's, what if there's electricity in that water? Like a, just a, you know, Romex line that's just, how can we test if it'll shock something? Throw like tin foil down there? Uh, I don't know, touch it. Yeah. Easy. So, oh, speaking of that, see those are the springs. That's, a, oh, that's an original light from the 60s, where that was mounted right there to the ceiling, right where the other light is, and that whole thing would, would do one of them numbers. But look at that. I mean, that blaster compared to Banjo. I mean, that's just crazy to me. So they couldn't get it open. It was rusted shut, so they had to plasma cut it. And then same thing here. This is blast door number five, the final blast door. Behind this wall right here is the actual missile silo where the missile nuclear missile head was stored back in the 60s where's the missile yeah i, I got scammed they didn't sell you the missile no no they, Wait, there's no missile no they, oh god we messed up yeah i know i gotta ask for i gotta ask for a partial refund or something so ladies and gentlemen welcome to the missile silo look what we got dangling here this is the missile silo folks Look at all this. So those are the blast doors. Those doors actually open to let the missile out. And yes, that is water. That is supposedly a hundred feet deep water. This thing is filled with water. This used to hold the actual rocket itself. How's that thing doing? <laughs> she's loud. Listen, she's, she's big. That's a hundred thousand lumens. And then she's watch this. Are you guys ready for this? That's bright. Yeah, so this is, oh, you, they can actually see pretty well. Yeah, surprisingly. That way you're not, they actually, yeah, you, this camera's got better vision than me. But remember we found a shoe down yeah, there. I'm trying to find it again. We found a shoe. I can't, yeah, so there's a, so, okay, fun fact. This, we're staying on this little rusty platform. If this breaks, there's nothing down there to climb up on and we'll be in 100 feet of water. So basically we'll just tread water till you die. It'd be like literally a mouse in a five gallon bucket filled with water. So we have to put in some safety precautions here as we get to exploring this. We want to explore the actual missile silo itself. You guys have to let us know what you think. A couple ideas I had off the top of my head. We could sink a GoPro on a string with a light and see how far it can go. They also make some type of submarine drone things that you can go in the water. I've never used them, so I have to call Jiggin. And then speaking of Jiggin and Yappy and DL Mighty, the, the water dragon boys, I'm gonna see if I can convince them, as long as we can figure out if this thing has electricity to it or not, because that wouldn't be good, have them dive it. Like I said, there's, there's supposedly a dead body in here. We don't know if it's still here or if it never was. The other thing that's crazy that the divers found when they came looking for the body are freshwater jellyfish. And I know, I'm like, that doesn't even make sense. I've never heard of that. We are in the middle of Nebraska. Like, why would there be freshwater jellyfish? Supposedly they're in here, so we have to find them. So you guys would comment down below, how should we explore this? We have to find, we have to get a way to get down easily, up and down easily. We have to make sure no one dies. I mean, we thought maybe magnet fish it. I mean, like, there's going to be stuff down here. This is from the 60s, folks. This was a military operation. Like, who knows when they disabled this thing? They just didn't eat all the guns and were like, just destroy them. Probably not, but they might have. They might have. So we have to find a way to explore this thing. I mean, we found, we did see a shoe, which... If you came down here, would you throw your shoe voluntarily? I feel like that wouldn't make sense. All this stuff is MREs. So they used to have kids sneak down in here. Can't now, because everything's completely locked up. Like this thing is, this is the most like break-in proof structure I've ever seen in my life. Safety precautions that the previous owner went through once he realized people had broken in at some point. Yeah, good luck. There's no, literally no way to get in. There's one way in, one way out, and it's impossible to get in. But before that, they used to throw all their MREs down there. So who knows what else they threw down there. Think about this. Kids in the 70s sneaking in, I mean, what do you think they'd be throwing down there? Weed? Good stuff. Knives? Anything that they want to get rid of? What was that? What was that? I think it's just water, but I don't know. Oh, God. Oh, there's the stalag mites? Is that right? Uh, stalag tights. So. Yeah, that might be it. Stalag titties. <laughs> yeah, these things dangling. Guys. These guys right here. Knock one off. I think that took 50 years, but go ahead. Really? Yep. 
Rip. It ruined about hard. three seconds. Took yeah. 30 years. <laughs> yeah, it took 40 years to get there, and now she's ruined. So you got those things, and those things are dangling from the... Uh... Shred, do you got that big light still? Yeah. Yeah, go back up top. So those doors used to open, and then the rocket, within, I think it was 10 minutes, would get lifted with an elevator out those doors. And then it would shoot up, and it would strike, whatever. The thing is, it took two years to build this thing, and then after two years of it in commission, they they ended the Cold War, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah, is that what they did? They said, never mind, Jake. JK, JK, he, he's chill. So anyways, this is the missile silo. I know, some of you guys are like, well, Flair, why would you buy this? I asked myself the same thing. I just knew it wasn't an opportunity I couldn't pass up. And I know with our newly acquired carpentry skills, Banjo, from the cabin, I think the sky's the limit. I mean, we can turn this thing into the next freaking sea world or something what about water slides that go around the whole thing straight down in there i mean this could be this could be next level this ladder goes up to actually a holding tank I got a question what is this guy doing you know it looks like water came out of that at some point yeah oh there's yeah those are lamps see the light bulbs up there right there you see those guys yeah who, who's changing those they need to work because like this thing is so dark we have to find a way to like light this place up really well So we might have to bring in some lights because I want this thing to be like fully lit for the videos because we need to explore this We need to dive it. We need to magnet fish it. We need to scuba dive it We need to snorkel it. We need to figure out what's down there a hundred feet deep See the thing is I can't hardly swim so it ain't gonna be me But we need to find somebody that can dive to the bottom and figure out what's down there I mean actually yeah turn that turn that big freaking flash on one more time I'm gonna show them how clear this water is so you can see that right there. That's in the water. It is crystal crystal clear water all the way down so all these like metal areas like all this stuff there's gonna be these down there where like you could explore there's tunnels there's tunnels like hvac tunnels that go everywhere that go underground like imagine getting down there and then swimming through those tunnels dude oh, it ain't gonna be me but it's gonna be somebody we gotta get jiggin out here jiggin's gotta be the fearless scuba diver because there's there's underwater there's craziness under here that's why i bought this i bought it for the unknown and i bought it so i would have a place to go fall out to in case something hits the fan where I know myself, my family, my friends would be totally safe. So now the objective is get this place up and running and operational, making it the sickest place possible prior to World War III. Um, so I don't know when that'll happen, but that's the time that we have. We have until someone starts firing missiles at us to, uh, to get this place nice and fixed up. So anyways, this is the actual missile silo. I can't, oh, that's what we need to do. We brought the tape measure. We wanna figure out we don't know how deep it is. That'll have to be a different episode because we didn't bring anything for that. What I said is I need to figure out how long of a ladder to order that will get us down to the water. And so we brought a tape measure that we can dangle until it hits the water. And then we'll know how something like a rope ladder or something like that. I don't know how long of a ladder to do. Should I get off this thing? 16 feet. 16, 16 feet. feet. Okay. So 16 feet to the water. So you could probably jump off that if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't get yeah, hurt. Yeah, you'd be right. yeah. You want to do it? No, actually, in fact, I said 50,000 likes on the last episode, and you guys only gave me 39,000, and I would have cannonballed into here. Joke's on you guys. So now it restarts. We're actually going to take it down a little bit, because I want to make sure it happens. 25,000 likes. You guys have to hit the like button, and I'll bring Macy here. Like, she, I mean, she knows I bought it, but not doesn't, re doesn't really know what this thing is. She's kind of, it's kind of one of those things where she just, like, closes her eyes and just walks away. And just, you know, it's just like, all right, he's just, he's just doing his YouTube thing. You know what I mean? But I feel like this is normally a YouTube thing would mean you know, another piece of land for some deer, another pond. This is a little different. It's a little bigger. This is next level. Still got a pond though. Hey, technically we've got, a, and we're, we're, we're gonna build another pond up top. So you guys have to let us know how, if you had this, how would you attack exploring it? Like I said, my thoughts are get a ladder so that way everybody can go down there. And then a GoPro with a light would be cool. Like I said, they, I think I've seen underwater drones. I don't know if they would work well in here or not. Um, I think they're probably pretty expensive. So unless I get a hold of one, we'll try the GoPro. Magnet fishing would, if we can't get down, if we can't get scuba divers down to the bottom of magnet fishing, although there's a lot of metal and it'd probably get attached. If there's guns down there, it would bring up the guns, it'd bring up the knives, it'd bring up anything that's metal. And we have some really powerful magnets. I mean, there's other challenge videos as well. Like we're thinking about bringing in an inflatable boat, sitting out there and then staying on, on an overnight banjo. What do you think really? about that? That's banjo. That's banjo. What do you think about that though? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not out. Oh, I'm out. You're out? <laughs> Two man boat, I'm good. We got you can film from up here. Yeah, I got you. You can pitch a tent right here. And then right you just here. like you just peek over and like, you guys good? You good to go? Okay, sounds good. So give us some content ideas. I mean, I bought it. I'm, like I said, there's only a few reasons why I did. One, the unknown. I'm just genuinely curious. I think it's, it could be like the craziest opportunity to find something sweet. Two, having an actual legitimate fallout shelter for the friends and family. And then three, making awesome content for you guys. So you guys are just as involved with this as me, except you didn't have to write the check. So you guys are lucky. You are in full control over what we do and how cool we make it. And again, maybe we'll invite a few guys out to come and stay the night once it is actually 
I would say operational because that sounds like I'm going to put a rocket in it and then they're going to put me on some list. So that's not what we're doing. We're going to finish the inside and make it livable. That was funny. Was He's worried about your list. The big list. Can can I can't be on that list. Man, I've already, I'm already on one. I can't be on two, you know? Oh, really? Can you give him a big shoe in here? Shoe! That's pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> I think that needs to be the new intro. Yeah. The echo. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to head back up. We're going to go to the surface. Like I said, there's six acres of land. We're going to fly the drone and show you guys the lay of the land. And I need your guys' help on how to develop the actual property itself as well as the living quarter. So we'll see you guys up top. We made it. Oh my gosh, is it nice down there? Freaking hot up here. It's like 58, 59 down there. Feeling nice. But we are up here. This is the full six acres of the property. We're going to start off with one of my favorite future projects of this place, which is a fishing pond that's dedicated to catch clean cooks. We're going to focus on fish that, uh, you know, mo reproduce quickly, provide a great food source, sustainable food source, something that, again, if something hits the fan, assuming there's no like radiation bomb that hits, meaning, you know, everything up here is fine. It's not burnt to a crisp, but we need to survive and get food out here. Right here, it's kind of hard to tell where we're at, but you can see on the drone shot, we're kind of in this corner here and there's a big depression and it's actually it was already at some point a retention pond way back in the day so I think what we need to do is a couple things one we need to dig it out we made it make it deeper and bigger right now it's about a quarter acre section I think we can make it bigger we could probably pull it up to here dig all this out we have to find let me know Banch if you need any dirt because I we have to find a place to haul that dirt we need to put it somewhere I'm not sure I'm not sure exactly where but move this out basically take all this down we'll leave like that tree there that's fine you can leave that this will be one big old pond maybe like a half acre make it nice and deep we come in here we pretty much do it ourselves we got the excavator we got the skid loader only thing we'd probably need is maybe a dump truck something that not you banjo an actual really? dump truck you, you, really we need an actual dump truck but maybe we'd find a place to to put that dirt unless you guys have any better ideas but so we're thinking pond there now this this is something i did not show in the first episode so this is like a an old well house we don't really know if it's operate it's got attacked by did you throw something at me no some them just hit me right in the face really? yeah i don't know i didn't like it though so this is an old well house and we're thinking we're not really sure exactly what to do with it but potentially a sweet little deer blind since i mean now you can see it I mean, that's, that's what you're dangling with. That's the entrance right there. There's not a whole lot of places to hunt. And so we're thinking maybe here, you've got a pond on one side. You've got a bunch of nice ground. There's a bunch, of, heck, you could put a two pond. You see that one over there? I didn't realize I was low ground. So you can see my neighbor, oh my gosh, you see that trail? Look at the trail between the fence. You that's see where it? the pivot runs through. Oh, does it? Yeah. No, the trail that comes right here. See it all the way up? Oh no, that guy, no. Yeah, that's a game trail. Hang oh, on, yeah. look at this sucker. So you're talking about deer, yeah, right here. It goes right here, right here. One, look at, oh my, look at the highway there, boys. Right there, so the pivot does come through the fence. This fence isn't like fully open on this side, but the pivot runs through here. But look at that, that's a game trail and a half. Comes right through the corn. So the deer are coming here. So we're thinking maybe food plot over there. We're not sure how low that is. There could be two ponds. We could do one pond there. We could do one pond over there potentially. Um, but then we could do food plot over here and then this could be a sick little deer blind some that you could come out to and go into here we could finish it up we got wasps Not anymore. so in here this is an old well house concrete floors oh yeah look at these look at the shooting oh you'd shoot bambi right they come right through there bang the only thing we might need to do is cut out another one for this side which this is just cheap old metal. We could probably cut another window, at least a little shooting window to shoot towards the pond. But I mean, this is like, I mean, if you needed a place to do like some skinning and stuff, this would be a nice little skinning shack. But I think making this a sweet little hunting cabin, little hunting, I guess, blind slash cabin, something that if you wanted to stay up here, you could. But I'm just thinking like hunting wise, so you can see all, see now you can see out there. So you're hunting, you're seeing them. Oh, there's a deer there coming in the food plot. Maybe we put a food plot in that corner right there so you could shoot there, put a food plot right there. And then we've got through there, we need to put another window. And then, so we could finish this out. We could make it look nice in here. You could spray foam insulate if you wanted to. And then for the ponds, we'd probably need to put, either put in a well. There's like four wells on this property. So we probably don't need to put in one. We just got to tap in one to fill it and make sure we pack it in with clay, do it the right way. So it actually holds water on like a lot of my other ponds. And then I'm not sure what the strat is on the roof, but I thought we could potentially put a ladder and then snipe from the from the top you, you think that's a good idea the old platform? yeah the old elevated stand like i feel like just... then you, you just climb up maybe maybe you put the ladder on the inside Ooh. so if you see a deer you're like oh i gotta get some elevation yeah. and then so also this also seconds as a like i mean you're probably safest in the bunker if something's hitting the fan but like let's just assume 
that the world's gonna end, World War III happens, and we go under attack, then at least you could po put somebody up in a sniper tower, and that could, Banjo could be on Overwatch duty. So he could be on, he could be on lookout duty, Jake will be in a tree with a little silence 22, so you won't even hear it, and you'll Why just- Why do you get to be down there? Huh? Why do you get to be down there? I didn't say I did. Uh, yeah. He Maybe. put a notice up out here for, to protect him. We're defending him, I guess, yeah. that's how it works, huh? I mean, I can go somewhere else, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll be in a ghillie suit just laying in the grass. Uh, Okay. Sneak, sneak attack right. with one man army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, riot shield, probably. This is the well house. Like, so on this side, this is the northeast side of the property, as you can see on the drone. This is where we would probably put a food plot. The, the water or the elevation is actually a little low, so we maybe could potentially get away with oh, a bunch of corn right there. We could potentially get away with another pond. We'll just have to come in here. We'll have to come in here and start doing something, start mowing and looking. It's not as deep. So I think food plot there, and then, you know, potentially the food plot could wrap into this. There's a well house there, and I think there's another one by that tree there. And like I said, there's openings where the, the pivot it kind of comes through the fence in several spots so the deer would be able to kind of come and go as they want they've got plenty of cornfield but there's not a whole lot of cover for them so you got that tree line there that they'd probably come from and then there's not really much there's not really much on that side so then up here we're at the top again same thing we could either put food plots or we could just leave it native grasses there's not really a ton to do right in the dead center but as we make our way over to the south side we're going to take you guys to on top of the missile silo so this is where these guys remember we were in the missile silo where all the water was and we looked up you saw those doors those doors would lead to outside and that's where the rocket would get lifted and then shot up and wherever the tar target was aiming at it goes up go towards that target and then destroy it this is it right here so this is where the rocket would come out and you've got these doors this is all kind so right now beneath me it would be like a 50 foot drop and then we hit that water and then the water is like supposedly another 100 feet we're not sure exactly but these doors are open so we're thinking if we can somehow get these doors open and i guess they said they weigh 50 tons not sure if that's true or not i don't know how to get them open but if we get them open we could call jiggin and have him bring his submarine and we could take a crane and we could lower the submarine in it and jig and i could go explore the missile silo in a submarine which would be insane for now it looks like a helicopter pad or maybe a basketball court banjo getting a helicopter next is that the plan you know probably gotta basketball make hoop might be more basketball realistic. hoop might be a little bit more affordable oh yeah i think that's a food plot right there so you got this little corner strat nice timber line right there so you come out bam right into the food plot you still get your little sniper tower right there banjo we'd be in business you also got some trees there that so we will have to i mean there's this is starting from scratch right we're gonna have to set out trail cameras we got to see what's coming and going how they're accessing it where they're where they're at i mean today it's super hot but we are coming into the fall season deer hunting season pretty heavy waterfowl wise there's not a ton out here but once we have a pond you might get the occasional teal or woody i wouldn't expect a ton of waterfowl but definitely coyotes i mean imagine banjo climbing on top of the well house in a ghillie suit middle of the night after you just came out of the ground from a missile silo with a suppressed thermal pew and then shooting coyotes and you get all that oh yeah. all, all that i mean you would see coyotes for miles once once they harvest the corn we gotta wait for them to harvest corn but so those are some videos you could look forward to we could do some thermal hot or thermal coyote hunting we don't have hawks thermal coyote hunting um predator hunting we could trap there's fence lines around here we could trap i mean again the idea is to have a sustainable wildlife population meaning the deer and whatever else and then the fish it, we're gonna have to bring here because there ain't no water around here but again i want to be where if something hits the fan, I gotta come out here. I think we, we maybe we'll build a house on top. Not like a big house, but just like maybe like a little barn a little shower section, a little shop house, maybe like a little two bedroom, something like kind of the size of the cabin down at the ranch, but something that you could comfortably live in. And then if something hits the fan, you go down to the basement or we just make the basement so freaking cool. You don't even need a house. You have to let us know, would it be cooler to leave it or would it be cooler to have like a sleeper house, a house that you wouldn't even know that the basement is a missile silo. I doubt you could build it on this. Cause I feel like code would probably say, you, go, I don't know if they'd be all right. With I mean, th to be honest, this is probably a stronger foundation than what they was code in neighborhoods. But if something were to crash, like your house would literally just yeah, be I don't gone. Yeah, they'd be happy about the whole hundred foot drop deal. Yeah, that man, that'd be a hell of a ride. Imagine you just sleep and all of a sudden, boom, house would be gone. Um, so there's some ideas. We have food plot ideas, pond ideas. This you have to let us know if you have any better ideas besides a basketball hoop and a basketball court. I mean, helicopter pad, but I ain't got no helicopter yet. So maybe one of these days we'll be able to take a helicopter. That would be the best. Also, when World War III happens, you get in a helicopter, fly over, you're safe and sound. We've got MREs to try. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff for this property that you guys have in store. But again, we need your guys' help. This is something I don't think has ever really been done on YouTube. There's no other channels to really watch to get an idea of what to even do with a property like this. There are people that have bought these and then turned them into like giant multi-million dollar condos and resorts. Your boy probably don't have the backing for that. 
so I think we're just gonna make it do some beefcake construction come in here and make it real nice uh, for myself and the boys to come come chill but this is another hunting spot potentially another fishing spot another spot to gain content but at the end of the day we just wanted something that was really fun really exciting really cool but then also if something hits a fan we've got a place to go so there you have it folks that is the missile silo property we are now proud owners of an Atlas F missile silo former Atlas F missile silo until we bring it back, Banjo. You think they sell those on Facebook Marketplace? Missiles? Yeah, the old Atlas F. Craigslist, actually. Oh, Craigslist got it? Yeah, yeah. If you guys know anywhere to get an Atlas F, I have the perfect place for it. So you also have to let us know. Anyways, again, comment down below what you want to see us do on this property first. If you have any design ideas for the, the inside, the living quarters, we need your help there. Also, some ideas on how to explore the water. How are we going to get down there without me diving it? Because there's no way I'm qualified for that. We got to make sure the water is somewhat safe and, you know, everyone is going to be healthy if they do this. But we got to see what's down there, man. I mean, this has been here for 50 50 plus years 60 years actually and i wanted to tell you because i know i said this this is the escape hatch so remember the little half ladder dangling from the ceiling in the living quarters that comes out right here it's all like blocked off now you can't access it right now but one day we'll we'll unblock it all to where we can actually crawl up and down that thing i think it'd be freaking sweet so welcome to the missile silo bunker base this is our new home for when something hits the fan but we got to make it cool in the meantime so comment down below what you guys want to see us do next remember hit the like button 25,000 likes and i'll bring my wife macy out here lord knows i mean i don't even know if she'll go inside but i'm gonna do my best to convince her you guys have to convince her you're gonna have to comment on this video to somehow convince macy to come out here and go down there because we need her reaction on camera hope you guys enjoyed today's video we'll catch you next one and peace